Hi, welcome to Phil's Favourite Films. I'm Phil, and the film being discussed today is John Carpenter's classic, Assault on Precinct 13. Assault on Precinct 13 was released in 1976 and was written, directed, edited and scored by John Carpenter. The film came about when producer J.S. Kaplan approached Carpenter to make a low-budget exploitation film on a budget of $100,000 with complete creative control. Carpenter wrote the first draft of the script as the Anderson Alamo, which took inspiration from Howard Hawks' Rio Bravo, as well as George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. The film was shot in the winter of 1975, with a smooth production that finished both on time and budget. Carpenter later on went to say that it was one of the most fun experiences that he's ever had directing. The film's title of The Anderson Alamo was changed to Assault on Precinct 13 by the film's distributor Erwin Yablans during post-production. So, on to the plot. The film opens on a police ambush on the gang's street thunder, leaving several members of the gang dead. This causes the four warlords of the gang to swear a blood oath of revenge. The film follows three different events that occur throughout the day, leading up to the main set piece of the film. We first see Lieutenant Ethan Bishop, played by Austin Stoker, on his way to take charge of the Anderson Precinct for a few hours before it permanently closes. We are then introduced to the character of Napoleon Wilson, played by Darwin Joston, a rather infamous prisoner, who is on his way to be transferred along with a couple other prisoners. After a humorous moment between Wilson and the Warden, the film cuts to a young girl and her father driving around the Anderson area. Meanwhile, we see that Street Thunder are on the prowl. Bishop arrives at the police station and introduces himself to the staff. We cut back to a very suspenseful scene involving a member of Street Thunder eyeing up potential victims with a sniper rifle. An ice cream man notices the gang's car circling the area and is immediately concerned. We soon find out that one of the prisoners on the bus is extremely ill and Starker, played by Charles Cyphers, decides to stop at the nearest police station to get help for the ill inmate. The father pulls up at a payphone to make a call and gives his daughter some money to get some ice cream. After a horrifying attack on both the ice cream man and his daughter, the father drives after the gang seeking revenge. The prisoners arrive at the Anderson station and are taken to the holding cells. The father manages to catch up with the gang and guns one of them down. When the rest of the gang start to follow him, he seeks refuge at the Anderson station. This causes a night of terror for everyone at the station as the gang proceed to siege the place. Well. Where do I start with this? This is a beautifully crafted film. Everything from the appropriately moody yet catchy soundtrack to the atmospheric cinematography as well as the strong, confident direction make this film special. Being someone who makes short films and would one day like to make feature films, this film is a big inspiration to me. I first watched this film when I was around 13. As soon as that opening theme on the soundtrack started playing and I saw that Carpenter had also composed the music, I knew that I wanted to learn how to compose music for my own films. At that point, I'd never heard of a director who did his own music. It was a revelation to me at that time. The film was filmed in the Panavision anamorphic widescreen format. The widescreen format is Carpenter's favourite and has been used on all of his films from Assault on Precinct 13 onward. He and cinematographer Douglas Knapp utilise the frame perfectly. All of the camera movement and shot choices are carefully chosen and used masterfully. Not a single shot is wasted. Every shot serves a specific purpose which makes for a more satisfying cinematic experience. The acting in this film is pretty good across the board with Austin Stoke playing a very likeable lead protagonist. He kind of serves as the audience's eyes as we're introduced into the world of the film. Darwin Justin as Napoleon Wilson gives a very calm and cool performance. He plays a very stoic badass, which I loved. 
His character is my personal favourite in this film. Laurie Zimmer as Lee gives a very mysterious and cool-headed performance. She plays the role almost like a femme fatale, which makes her interactions with Napoleon Wilson all that more interesting. The rest of the cast all turn in solid performances, including Nancy Loomis, Tony Burton, Charles Cyphers, as well as Martin West. One of the things that I admire the most about this film is how Carpenter slowly builds up an increasing amount of suspense all throughout. The atmosphere is incredibly rich in this film. While watching it, I felt like I'd been sucked into the world of the film. You can also see the Night of the Living Dead influence with the very zombie-like tendencies of the gang, as well as our heroes being stuck in one location for the majority of the film. This is a film that I would seriously recommend to aspiring filmmakers. I've learnt so much from this film, from the importance of good cinematography and direction, to how much music can add to a film. I highly, highly recommend this film. Huh. Well, until next time my friends. See ya. Anybody got a smoke?